All right, let's talk about setting up our filming environment. And this is where I think things get really fun really fast. First of all, think about where you're actually going to do your filming, right? And you can do indoors, you can do outdoors, you can do a combination like I do, always mixing it up to have that variety in there. So it's, it's important to understand what some of the pros and cons are, what some of the challenges are associated with each environment. Now, I'll tell you, there are really pros and cons to indoor versus outdoor, and a lot of them come down to acoustics and lighting. Beyond that, and we'll dive into those more here in another lesson, but beyond that, what we have is really a lot of consistency in terms of how we're going to set things up. For the type of filming that we're talking about here, where it's just business vlogging and it can be more casual, you can have real conversations with whomever's watching your videos, and it doesn't need to be perfect, you can accept things, especially those that are inherent to our current situation with the quarantine stuff, uh, that may make a normal film very imperfect and maybe not even fun to watch. I, for example, am in our home right now out in California, and I don't know if you can pick this up on the audio, but there's a dump truck outside, or actually I think it's a cement truck spinning around. I could either wait a couple of hours for that truck to finish up and leave, or you can just kind of make do, and I'm going to make do. Now that said, it's always a good idea to try to minimize distractions. So pay attention to things indoors like HVAC, the ventilation units, blowing air. Uh, sometimes if you're at home, you can even get a lot of noise from say refrigerators or washer and dryer, washing machines, and of course other people. So do try to keep them to a minimum just because it's gonna make some of the editing easier or non-existent if you can just use the footage as is. You'll probably also wanna play around with the acoustics of wherever you choose to do this. And if you do it inside, there can be specific challenges. I'll tell you that if you're in an area like this, where we've got hardwood floors throughout, we've got drywall all over the place, we've got uh, you know, all of these other really hard surfaces and actually very little furniture that's gonna be sound absorbing, so it creates a lot of echoes. That will be exacerbated the smaller the space as a general rule, because you're gonna get that immediate bounce of your voice or of the, the sound right off of a wall or off of a ceiling and right back into the microphone. So that makes it particularly challenging. Again, we're not going per for perfection. And once we get into the software piece, I'll show you a really easy setting that's going to improve that enough as a general rule that it's going to be a non-issue. But we still want to start off with the highest quality audio we can, as well as all of the other dynamics of the room. Now, over the past two years, I've built a couple different studios, both at my home and at our office, and had to deal with this stuff a lot. I wanted the sound to be really good from the start. So I bought a lot of those foam acoustic panels that you can stick up. Uh, I got moving blankets and kind of pinned those all around, made sure that we had carpet on the floor, and I added like carpet or some other sound absorbing material to the top of the table or the desk that I was working on. It can also be really helpful to have stuff especially out in front of you, because if you're speaking this way, the first thing it's gonna reverb off of is gonna be in front of you. So if you wanna do any acoustic panels at all, that'd be a good place to do it. If you want to do any moving blankets or acoustic blankets, that's the best place to do it. But again, don't chase perfection on this because it's going to be fine for the case of business vlogging. One of the better things you can do to help with the acoustics is going to be making sure you choose the right microphone equipment, and we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. So one of the things you're probably going to notice very early on, if you're filming inside, is you're going to get some level of echo. And if you start to really care about that, it's something that's going to probably bug you a little bit. We'll get it to the point where it's not going to be an issue. But what's really kind of cool is you'll notice if you ever do any filming outside, most of that is going to be fixed. Now, you swap out one problem for another in a lot of cases. So what you lose in terms of the echo when you go and film outside, because as a general rule, there's not going to be anything for the sound to bounce off of, you actually gain back as an issue related to surrounding noise. If I'm inside of a home or a room or a conference room or a studio, it's pretty easy for me to isolate all other sounds. Whereas if I was outside right now, I might have to deal with traffic or people walking by or the cement truck that's doing its business out here. So bottom line, just consider your environment when it comes to the acoustics of the space overall. Understand not just that it, it doesn't need to be perfect, but that you understand some of the trade-offs that you're going to have based on the room you choose, the type of furniture or flooring or walls that you have in that room, or whatever is going to be outside, and then any kind of corollary noise that's going to be made by any kind of other person or any kind of machinery. Now, you also want to make sure that you're going to have a very good-looking shot. And the best way to do that is to make sure that your camera equipment is going to be positioned properly. And the easiest method to make sure that happens 
is by having the right tripod. Now you can actually get creative here because obviously we've all done some sort of a selfie type of video or we maybe sit our iPhone up against a cup or sit it on top of something else. Some of us even have little stands for our smartphones already. Any of those things are going to work, but I'm gonna show you a few different options for tripods that I think will make it a whole lot easier and at the same time be very versatile so that you can use it in all these different environments. Let's take a look at a few. So take a look at the setup I'm using right now. This is actually not a real tripod. This is a microphone stand and it allows me to just get the camera a little bit closer to my face, as you can see. Okay, but as for real tripods, let's look at a couple of different examples here. Keeping in mind that the main thing we want from a tripod is to just hold the camera steady. Having a shaky shot where you're holding the camera with your hand, especially trying to do something selfie, is gonna make it look unprofessional enough that it actually will be distracting. So that's not even a level of chasing perfection that we're not concerned with. That's something that's too easy to overcome, so it's just gonna make you look bad if you don't use it. So we can get really simple at first. And look, we've got these little, I almost call them like selfie. They're mini tripods, but they're great for selfies because number one, you can sit it in almost anywhere on a table in front of you and you just have the pieces that screw into the top, but then you can just as easily close it up and then it makes it a whole lot steadier if you do need to do some sort of a selfie video for corollary footage. Now, what we're gonna do is take something, and for this one, because of my example, having an iPhone, that's what we're gonna start with. So there are a lot of these smartphone kind of clips that just expand, and you can see that it's got a screw on the bottom and that just screws right onto the top of your tripod. Couldn't be simpler than that. Now, this is a cheap plastic one. I also have a bit nicer one here that's actually from a company called Loom. And this one's essentially the same thing, but it is either steel or aluminum. So it's gonna be more durable, I'm sure, in the long run. So these just screw on here also. Now there is a key difference to the one that I have in my hand here, and I'll show you what that is. You notice that even when it's screwed into the tripod, it's got a hole on top. That's kind of key because what we wanna be able to do is plug some accessories in. So I'm gonna show you another example here. This is the one that I'm using on the microphone stand currently, but if you look right into the top there, this is what we call a shoe mount. So a cold shoe mount right here because it doesn't have any power to it. There is a hot shoe, which means it's got power, and that's for devices like flashes and such on your DSLR cameras. But this one's really great. Also has some additional controls back here that allow me to turn so I can go from vertical mode to horizontal mode. Uh, once I get my phone in there, I can flip this down so that it's actually, there we go, locked in place. Uh, so a bit higher end, I think this one was maybe 35 bucks, somewhere in that range where some of these others can be like four or five bucks. But the key is we want to be able to put our accessories in there and you're going to see why once we start to talk about some of the additional equipment. So the, here's another one, by the way. And this is probably the cheapest of all. So it just kind of screws down. But again, I don't consider this one terribly relevant to what we're talking about today because it lacks the ability to put accessories on the top. All right, second shot here, let's go. Uh, you know how much I love this new GoPro because I already mentioned that. And this is a GoPro tripod that's super versatile. So number one, selfie stick. Okay, I can even turn the camera like that. So I've got a selfie. It's a relatively close selfie stick, but only until you unscrew it, and now look at that. We've got all that length. We can also use this as an actual tripod at any one of those heights. So these legs just pop out, and boom, point it right back up. Notice that uh, the setup here also includes a shoe mount, so we've got a light up here. We'll talk about those more in a little bit. Let me show you. Perhaps one of the most versatile, although not most portable or convenient, is gonna be a standard tripod. So this is something that you probably would have used back in the 80s with your DSLR camera, with your 35 millimeter camera. And these are great because this is telescoping, so I could have it right here on a desk and I could probably make that angle work. Because again, we don't wanna be looking up people's nostrils, so you don't want it too low. You also don't want it too high. So some of these you could actually get just enough height in there. In fact, I can make it lower by moving these legs out. So I can get it down to a pretty decent height for just about anything. But this one's nice because even if you're standing up, you're gonna be able to get this at the right height so that it's at least coming straight on when you're filming. Uh, so you can take this one around and if you're walking down the beach, walking down the street, standing in a park, interviewing people, you've got the right height. As versatile as these are, 
you're never going to be able to get the height you need unless you sit it on a desk. So if you don't have a table or a desk handy, this is gonna come up short. On the portable tripods or mini tripods, you've got some of these. And this is actually the very first one that we ever got. And they're kind of cool because they have these bendy legs, okay? And that's handy because number one, you can put them into a really stable kind of position, make sure it's not gonna tip over in the wind. But number two, you can actually bend these like around a fence post or a tree branch or anything else to get any kind of angle you want, even if you end up having it hang upside down from a tree branch. I will say, one thing I really don't like about these because I'm OCD, is that once you start bending these legs, it's almost impossible to get them completely straight again, and that drives me nuts. Now I showed you my iPad setup, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like up close here. And again, I had that mounted to my standard tripod, and we've just got our little wedge here, so that would just go right into place, and then you screw this piece down. I'm gonna leave this over here so you can see better, but what I have here is a bit of a contraption that I put together myself. First of all, I have the piece from the tripod right there, which I then have screwed into a shoe splitter, essentially. So each one of these sides allows me to screw in some sort of an accessory. I could put a microphone over here, I could put a light up here, whatever. In this case, I took this carbon fiber iPod tripod, or iPad tripod converter, and stuck that in there. Now I have all of this ability to modify the angles by unscrewing these and moving it to wherever I want. And what we have up at the top is just a very strong magnet. And at the back of my iPad, you can see that I've got this piece that that goes into. So how strong is this magnet? I mean, that's probably a two pound iPad, maybe a three pound iPad, and it's gonna hold it really well. There is also this pink or red or purple kind of screw in the back, and you can screw that down so that it actually locks it in, and then you don't have to worry about it falling out if somebody bumps it or if the wind is really strong. I will say that when you get into the iPads, you're gonna be a lot more limited on the types of tripod adapters you can find. In fact, this was about the only one I came across on Amazon where I actually felt like it was gonna be sturdy enough to withstand the wind. I had done some tests with iPad filming just on our back patio a couple of weeks ago, and just the slightest breeze actually made the footage bounce quite a bit. So a lot of them just don't have the stability that's gonna be required for a heavier device like this. This one, with it being a carbon fiber piece that locks down and using almost nothing but metal parts in my configuration, made it really strong. All right, I'll be sure to put links to every one of the things that I've shown you today in the description so that you can pull them up on Amazon on your own or any place that you can buy them. And now that you've got a lay of the land on tripod equipment and your general environment or studio, let's jump into the actual camera hardware. So we'll do that in the next lesson. I'll see you there.